Okay, I'm going to record. Okay. Okay, recording is in progress. Let's roll here at 13 Great. after the hour. Thanks, folks, for stuck in, sticking with us here on the 9th of March, 2023. We have Sherwood Moore, friend of the group here, Supply Chain and Trade Finance SIG, who is a uh, leader for the Climate Action and Accounting SIG. And we've been talking with them a little bit, and we wanted to kind of catch up and see what they've been up to and have them share the evolution of climate accounting and the new measurement economy. That sounds very cool, sure, with the new measurement economy here. Yeah, so, thank you. Uh, without, well, I guess before we get going, um, well, actually, before we get going here, we've had some problems with invites. If you have an old invite on your calendar, um, please delete it and go out and get the new one from the uh, um, from the Hyperledger calendar since we had some challenges and that's why we're getting going a little bit late here uh, with things. And as always, the Andrea puts out the new or puts out the the invite link for Zoom, the correct one that we're going to be using for the rest of the year uh, here. And so that's the one that we're going to always use. So with that, no further ado, Sherwood, we'll turn it over to you. She should be able to start sharing screen and uh, take us through. Sherwood, while you're doing that, are you okay with questions along the way or do you want to wait? Yes. Uh, in fact, I would I would prefer to have questions along the way, uh, in particular also with the presentation. This is a, kind of a newer version. So if there are any kind of questions uh, about the uh, the presentation, please let me know. Good. Um, <clears throat> Good. Yeah, I'd like to make this a dialogue conversation. Great. So go, ahead, go right ahead, Sherwood. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to do a little slideshow action. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I changed the title on here actually just before I got on the call. And, but I, this is going, essentially what I'm going to do is introduce the work we've been doing around distributed <clears throat> climate accounting. Um, but, but I want to kick that off by describing what we are, um, or sharing what we're describing is the measurement economy. Um, and the reason I want to do that is because essentially the climate accounting solution that we're talking about is uh, something that offers a new level of granularity um, to corporate emissions data. And in general, corporations are reticent to share that information. So the reason I want to kick this off with the measurement economy is because this is our kind of prelude to why companies are, are, are going to be interested in kind of sharing um, very accurate climate data uh, with, with uh, kind of public, public, publicly. So without further ado, hopping into it. Um, so right now, corporations are primarily reporting because they're required to. <laughs> There's different um, regulations out there that are they're asking companies to report their their carbon emissions, um, and so they're they're doing it um, in kind of uh, annual reporting. Um, and I'll kind of share some different reasons why it's not super accurate. Um, we are seeing indicators that that is going to have to change, and this is the reason why is because emissions data um, is is currently and we think increasingly going to be affecting corporate bottom lines, uh, affecting their profitability. And so that's going to get their attention. Uh, that's going to require um, uh, accurate climate data in real time. So what are the building, we, we describe this as the measurement economy, the measurement of carbon emissions. Um, and there are four different kind of pillars of, of the measurement economy. The first one is government regulation. Um, this is happening in the European Union right now. There's kind of a, a pilot called the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, which is effectively um, pro providing a tax on carbon for about five different goods that are being imported into the European Union. Um, it's like concrete, steel, um, aluminum, uh, fertilizer, very high carbon emissions activity uh, products. Um, and so... To quantify that, that particular, um, so this, let me back up. So this is affecting the operating expenses of these organizations. And we expect this to be rolled rolled out because the European, uh, Europe is generally about significantly ahead of, of the rest of the world as far as um, 
kind of climate action and they are kind of consistently the pattern setters. Um, and so the government regulation for this one particular, these five particular industries in the European Union, that's going to be the equivalent of about $8 billion uh, by 2030. So it's, it's quite significant when you consider this is just for five different industries. Um, the next one is sustainable finance. So there are finance vehicles like sustainably linked loans and bonds, for example, but there's a whole kind of ecosystem of sustainable finance that is emerging. It is offering preferential rates um, of 5%, sometimes even up to 10% uh, to corporations that are reducing their carbon footprint. This is a significant amount of, of, of savings on the cost of capital. Um, and the size of this marketplace, we estimate this to be well, about $22 trillion is estimated that will be injected into the green finance market by 2031. That's a massive, uh, it's a massive um, amount of capital. Okay, can I ask um, a specific question there? Yes. Sir, on the five to 10%. Is that the actual rate or is that a reduction in the rates? So that's uh, got a, that's a loan at five. So it's five, five it's, percent. I'm reduced by 50 basis points or something like that. Yeah, my understanding is that that is uh, I, 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 this is numbers that I got from um, one of my colleagues. Um, this is the uh, reduction on on different interest rates, and so that's obviously going to depend on on you know broad like a broad range of, of kind of financing. Um, I've I need to kind of ask him where he got this number. I've seen up to eight percent reduction. Um, just kind of on some superficial digging. Um, it's a good question, and that number. Uh, <clears throat> this that sounds number more realistic than eighty percent. I'll tell you from my point of view. <laughs> no, I, so a five to ten percent reduction. Um. Uh. Yeah. I. I. But I need to. I need to kind of yeah. verify this with that number. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Good point, though. Thanks for pointing that out because that's going to make me get on get on the ball on that one. Um, the other piece is demand for low carbon products and services. Uh, so we are seeing this beginning to affect price premiums, uh, market share, and also even creating new product categories. So what I point to is the, um, the 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 electric vehicle market is an entire marketplace developed around people interested in low emissions. That's a two hundred eight billion dollar market. Um, the last is the financial marketplace is pricing environmental risk into investment opportunities, right? So this is impacting corporate valuation. Um, and to provide an example of, of the magnitude of, 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 this, uh, of this injection, $130 trillion in investment capital has been earmarked to invest in corporations committed to achieving net zero. This is just by the, uh, the UN Glasgow Financial Alliance. Uh, they made that announcement at COP26. So there's a lot of investment dollars specifically earmarked looking to invest in corporations. It's been committed to investing corporations that are that are, that are moving to, to 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 work towards achieving net zero, which obviously affects the demand for for that stock. It affects the valuation for that stock, and 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 also you know, the valuation is impacted by the fact that you know we're talking about these uh, government regulations, sustainable finance demand for low carbon product, you know, this is operating expense, this is cost of capital, this is, uh, this is revenue. Um, so this is when a, when a CEO is looking at the corporate strategy, these are the things that they're looking at. Um, and so we're seeing these indicators come down the pipeline. And this is kind of what we describe as a measurement economy. And this is why we think uh, climate data is so important. Uh, because, um, you know, to, to, to survive and thrive in the future, um, uh, corporations uh, are, are going to, if the corporations that learn how to turn their climate data from what now is perceived to be a liability into an asset um, are the ones that are going to be to th be able to thrive. And, and how do you turn it into an asset? Well, you uh, begin decarbonizing, you capture that data, you use that data to uh, develop competitive advantage by de having decreased operating expenses, having, you know, larger market share, higher market valuation, being able to kind of raise a uh, lower cost of capital, beat out your competition, right? So um, 
what we're focused on the MO for, for this decentralized climate accounting platform that we're developing is, is essentially to create an efficient marketplace for this data. We need to be able to share that data between corporations and these different stakeholders. <clears throat> to do that, any uh, efficient marketplace requires the three things, accessible data, low cost data, trusted data. And, then, and blockchain is perfectly well suited for this particular use case. Um, so we're focused on using blockchain to deliver uh, an interoperable layer of emissions data uh, across supply chains and, and connecting them with market stakeholders, um, providing for low cost data, providing transparency into how emissions data is calculated uh, and how it flows through supply chains and, digi and, and digitizing the process of, of measuring, reporting, and verifying. Um, the last piece is trusted data. Uh, so if we can um, decrease, uh, I'm sorry, uh, these two things are mixed up. Um, so essentially with the trusted data, if, if we can provide transparency into how this information is being captured, we can provide trust in, in the data. Um, I'm not seeing the hands great. Okay, so now when we're looking at the marketplace right now, and to the right, this is this is the real supply chain for the development of photovoltaic uh, solar cells. Um, the we currently are looking at a uh, an inefficient marketplace. Uh, there are a lot of barriers up, and that's why climate data isn't really being able to be used. Uh, is, is, is a corporate strategy quite yet. Um, and this is because there's low data access. E e corporate reporting is being done in, in silos. It's housed in centralized databases. Uh, it's generally being reported at the corporate level um, and it's locked in annual reports. Um, so there's no kind of ability to kind of have a centralized database of information to work from. Um, data cost is high because it's manually being measured, reported, and verified in a lot of, uh, most often. Um, and each emissions event um, or each kind of corporate report um, has to be analyzed amongst a sea of reports. So, you know, each one of these little dots in the supply chain is potentially developing their own emissions report and they're kind of sharing it up the line. Um, but there's there's no ability to, to, to really kind of have real time shared access into all the data. And the last piece is there's low trust. And this is the data is trusted because it's easy to manipulate. Uh, and that's because we have fragmented standards and we have a lot of lack of primary data. And so corporations are gaming the system uh, to benefit themselves as, you know, not pointing any fingers. This is what they're designed to do. How you, how you develop trust is transparency to how that information is, is, is kind of captured um, and then the standards and the approach to kind of calculating carbon emissions. That's how you develop trust through transparency. And I don't know, so, this is a, I guess, question for you. Sure. Yeah. One of the challenges I have, and this maybe this comes a little bit later, it's not quite this, but it feels like there's millions, maybe there's probably not millions, but maybe thousands of different pieces of software out there or different attempts to capture carbon <laughs> emissions. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. I, I, and I, I, I went like, to Capterra oh, well, and I saw, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do here. Um, yeah. uh, so if you could speak to that, that would be helpful. How do, how do you sort the wheat from the chaff? Why do we need another one? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, let me speak to that right now, actually. Because um, I, like, I would love to kind of hear your feedback on this. I find that to be absolutely overwhelming and it gives me anxiety every time I try to kind of do like a competitive analysis. Um, what okay, I will I'm say... I'm not alone here is what you're saying. No, it's okay. awful. Um, and I can, you know, you can only imagine... Um, you know, every single different node in the supply chain being, you know, if you're a, if you're like a materials provider, you know, and you have, you're supplying, you know, 10 different industries with a hundred different vendors, or, uh, people you're supplying in each industry, and each one of them has a different system that they're asking you to use. It, I mean, it must drive them crazy. Um, you know, so what we're trying to do is um, essentially build uh, an open source solution uh, that 
can reach scale by allowing everybody to kind of build, you know, own the solution collectively and build whatever kind of components they want and have the solution be set up so that we can capture data from any number of, of, of existing solution providers out there and, and just kind of bring it together in a centralized place that's open, right? So the way that we're different is that all of these solutions are kind of walled gardens uh, and, and, and they're running on like basically SaaS business models, which generally um, don't cooperate with kind of their competitors, right? So they don't really want to share information. So that's, but the value um, the value in the environmental data is the ability to share it, right? So that's a kind of a key need that these different vertical solutions aren't really kind of set up to sure. solve for. I'm just yes. curious, um, on the fragmentation, GS1 has done um, pilots with IBM and SAP, Food Logic and, and Ripe.io. I've also seen other pilots in Europe. I know Origin Trail has done a lot of interoperability of data, supply chain management data. Do you know if any of those interoperability pilots have included climate data? I don't. Um, and you've really piqued my interest, Alicia. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I would be very interested in, in kind of in, in finding that out. Um, uh, there's a lot, I mean, you bring up a good point too. Like there's a lot going on and it's difficult to kind of keep your arms around everything. Um, but I think that's, that'd be a really interesting thing to explore. Do you have if any you visibility? Remind me later, I can reach out to origin trail to see if there's, Amazing. if they've done any climate data. And yes. Just remind, will, remind me later. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, Alicia, this is Jeff. I was just wondering, do you, on that interoperability analysis, did it include um, functionality descriptions of these other solutions? What's the functionality that they have? What, um, uh, especially on the data collection, I, I've got experience in, past experience with the oil industry around reformative gas in the US and Europe. And mm -hmm. um, there is a reason why oil company that I worked for built an in-house solution and, and never touched on all the marketing ones that were out there and had to do around data right. collection and um, it enabled the trader, the trading desk then to have verified data and get out there and do trades certain times when it was, data was more, credits more valuable than others. And I'm just wondering, um, like Sherwood is saying, I think the two bullet items there, uh, we found that to be huge. And I was in a, I forget the call on Tuesday where I, I asked a question to the, who was it shortly where I said, I see your system, it's all great. How do you collect the data? Is the data have to be pre-prepared by spreadsheets, by some internal systems and get it all prepared and then feed it? Or can you collect raw data and have mm -hmm. smart contracts or blockchain functionality, not only uh, put an identifier on it so that it's locked, by an entity, but also can compute that for you and get and meet these two items on there. That's where I was wondering if you had any info around the studies that they did. What's the functionality of other systems that are out there? My experience has been over the years is they're all very poor on the front end, not the user front end, the data collection end. They're poor. Right. Um, um, that's a really good question. I'm not remembering the details that were shared with me last year, the year before, well, year before last, I, I believe, uh, Raja Ramachandran from Ripe.io spoke, I think it was to the social impact SIG about a project that they were doing, but it, I think he, at some point I've also seen him talk, and I think it was during that, about the a little bit about the interoperability pilots that they were part of with SAP and IBM Food Trust for GS1. What does, it, what does the interop, interoperability mean in that context? I mean, with other systems or? Sure. Well, other systems because different, different companies were working with the producers, uh, the the fisher people, the, the logistics companies. So the in this case, they were moving the data between different SaaS platforms. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Yeah. 
Well, <clears throat> I worked for BP for decades, and I'll just say that because of this in-house system we had, and we were able to manage the data flow into it, we would we kill for a blockchain solution back then. That was the only that was the only oil company that could sell millions of dollars of credits in the open market because of the way we brought data in and the trading desk get the got the data right away. It was verified right away, and no systems could do this. And so this data piece I always looked at as huge. Um, yeah. Anyway, okay. millions of dollars of credits who were oh. sold by BP. It's other oil companies. I'm sure that's <clears throat> huge. So they didn't give money. me any of it. <laughs> you, you need to negotiate a cut next time. Okay. Bonus. Okay. Anyway, Sherwood, you were talking about interoperability. I want to make sure that, that we get as much from you as we can with your time here. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I don't know if I have too much more to share there. You know, with with the solution that that I'm going to share with you, there's a couple different things that are out there. Like the um, the Inner Work Alliance is in the process of developing um, a standard for um, uh, emissions profile, kind of net net emissions token. So it's a token around yeah, standards around how to kind of develop tokens around emissions. Um, I think that'll probably that if if a standard like that is picked up, um, that will really significantly help <clears throat> the um, uh, the interoperability. Um, <clears throat> yeah, ultimately, I think in what I'm going to kind of share is is the kind of solution to <clears throat> to this challenge. It's it's the tokenization. Of emissions data in a standardized way, and that and that if you if you're able to kind of follow a standard, which thankfully there are no standards yet for you know emissions tokenization. Uh, so hopefully the one the one that the IAWA is putting out is promoted enough so that nobody tries to develop two or three or four of them. Um, but that would significantly help with the interoperability. Okay. And sure, what I guess one one thing that Jeff said, where he said the challenge where he worked was on the data collection end. Do you see that as yep. a broad based kind of issue that the whole data collection issue is still still uh, maybe more manual than sensor based out there? Yeah, I mean, that's, so this is kind of coming back to the point um, that, but well, the point of this whole solution, you know, I think that, um, uh, I think that it, data needs to be, collected by each individual company in the su supply chain that they were that they're responsible for uh and if 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 the measurement economy is essentially a, uh, providing financial benefit to having accurate data and if that is the case the mar market forces will uh kind of drive um just like just like the market forces drive drive different companies to try to find ways to cut costs, it'll also drive them to figure out ways to cut costs uh, in improving uh, in capturing data, but also you know improving the quality of that data. Um, and I think that's the the real secret to this. Essentially, when, when I'm kind of describing the measurement economy, what I'm describing is um, you know instead of price pressures on cost, you know you have the same kind of market forces that are 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 focused on the carbon cost. And that goes all the way down the supply chain to the measurement reporting and verification. Um, but, you know, in a very, from a, you know, due to the nature of supply chains and the complexity of supply chains, uh, I think it needs to be decentralized in order for it to be decentralized and still be trusted, there needs to be transparency. Okay, good, thank you. Well, we go along to the okay. next one here. Sure. Um, moving on to the next slide. So in a very, very quickly, and I've kind of described some of these things, but what we're trying to do is provide high data access by, by converting, you know, the supply chain into, you know, a decentralized, using the decentralized ledger technology, blockchain technology to create that underlying shared database, uh, for information to be kind of shared and stored. Um, we are. We want to lower data cost by, you know, essentially allowing these financial pressures to, by, you know, encourage ways to 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 lower cost. And you can lower cost by digitizing the process of measuring, reporting, and verification. Um, some of our solution can help with that, um, but you know, uh, the other sensor technologies will also kind of help with that. 
Um, and also lower data cost by decreasing the cost of obviously sharing information. You know, if it's all that information is shared in one in one layer that you can have access to and, and kind of um, slice and dice of data however you want, that's significantly more cost effective than having to request, you know, a hundred different suppliers to share their emissions data and then analyze and hire somebody to analyze that, right? That's expensive for every company on the planet. Um, the last piece is low data trust. Again, trust through transparency. Uh, if we can show how that information was measured, reported, and verified, the standards that it used, um, that I think is a first step towards this level, this idea of interoperability, uh, because you can at least, even if you have data using different standards, you can at least kind of understand that and begin to kind of navigate how to solve for that. Um, I'm not going to go through like the basics of, of, of how the technology works and what we're using. Um, this is the solution <clears throat> that, that we've built so far. Um, there are kind of three major components of it. Uh, one is a net emissions token network. And this is essentially just an open source tool that calculates the emissions profile and, and it can do it at the company facility or product level. Uh, but essentially, you are uh, creating the profile through tokenized emissions. You have an emissions debt token, which represents the emissions debt that's incurred through the activity that emit the greenhouse debt gas. There's also an emissions credit token, uh, which can be used as an offset of the debt that right, removes the emissions from the atmosphere. So, you know, um, we all know what that is. Um, so this, the, the general idea is this, you know, you have um, companies that are um, obviously buying, they're emitting, uh, they have emissions, they also have, are, are taking actions to offset those emissions. Um, if we're going to work at the product level, this allows them to basically uh, apply those two um, to kind of create a profile for their net emissions impact, which can then be added uh, to the product as it kind of goes through the supply chain and each individual organization adds their own to create the overall net emissions uh, profile. Um, I've got another visual that will hopefully kind of share that and make it a little bit more clear. Um, we also have an emissions data channel. So this is, um, uh, it's an open source tool to aggregate and verify emissions data that's used to mint the tokens on the emissions uh, network. Um, we also have excuse me, secure identifier solutions. Uh, this is for identity and credential management for all the different uh, stakeholders um, on the platform as part of the supply chain. So everybody knows who's who and everybody has uh, kind of clear identity and, uh, and and kind of permissions. Does that all make sense? I mean, you know, it's... I get the token idea. I guess the question I would have, if you go to the top, um, there. Basically, instead of collecting individualized or discrete data, you're allowing you to create yourself a profile that says, hey, at a product level, we, we have this kind of emissions associated with it. Is kind of kind of my takeaway from what that first line says. Yeah, so I need to improve this here, but the general idea is um, I mean, what I really want to do is, so essentially the emissions activity um, will you know, probably following IWA standards, you know, it'll be, you know, the, the green token will represent a certain amount of emissions um, at, for, for an action, right? And that emissions, um, you know, can be assigned to, to a product, right? Um, you know, so by combining the two, you create the emissions profile right here in the middle, um, which, you know, has two, you know, emissions tokens and one offset token here. Um, and those, are th this, what I'm trying to share, so <laughs> this middle piece right here is this token right here. And, you know, each customer is kind of adding on, you know, their own, you know, impact to that particular product. This is not a good visual. Let me just be upfront about that. Like I'm working on it. Um, I understand it's a work in progress. No worries. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, um, I'm just trying to figure out the old, the old garbage in, garbage out. You know, where, where's the data coming from on the emissions, and how does that, yeah, the yeah. Code, right? Is it you know somebody just pronouncing, hey, I know this, and you know you, you're kind of trusting them, or is an audit or something? I mean, it, it's a problem everywhere. So it's not just this isn't just emissions, you know. 
Yeah, I mean, so we're trying to solve that just through transparency, right? So this is at a high level what we're trying to accomplish. The, the data pulling, um, you know, the, we're, the, the emissions channel network essentially it provides a space for, for them to kind of provide um, the data related to their emissions. Now that data can either already be verified um, or it can just be you know measured and reported um, and it can be verified you know, on, on the platform, right? Um, once you have verified emissions, that emissions can be added to the, you know, that's, that's added to the emissions profile, which, which then can, you know, that this is what provides kind of that interoperable layer of information that kind of flows, you know, through tier three to, to tier one to, to the value chain. I and mean, that's really the slide that I'm going to build is showing how these tokens follow a product through the different tiers. Um, but the idea is that you know, if you have, you know, if you have calculated your emissions uh, based on, essentially based on each activity and you're kind of adding it and allowing that to kind of be tracked um, all together on this database, you can use that data however you want. Um, again, you can you can use it to calculate at the at the product level, at the facility level, at, at the company level, but it's from the bottom up. And the value of that is that you're able to provide this environmental data to these different stakeholders that I mentioned um, for whatever needs they have. You know, so in the green finance market, access to data is kind of the primary barrier for all these all this you know investment dollars that are sitting on the sidelines. Um, and it's a huge cost impediment, right? And so having a solution like this really lowers that acts the the, the 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 cost of the cost of the borrowing cost, um, and kind of opens up the ability, you know, to to kind of bring financing to decarbonization activities in, in kind of a much more liquid way. Um, that's just one example. Um, for, for green finance, but, you know, it's, you know, Tom, it's, uh, it's early days, you know, we, so what we built is a skeleton um, and it's open source. So what we're trying to do is, you know, some of the questions you're asking um, we've only have figured out, um, yeah. but we have the infrastructure in place. Yeah. I'm just yeah. curious what, what the state of the art is right now. Cause I mean, right. I, don't think anyone well, I mean, I can tell you what the state small. of the art is right now. The I state of the art. Yeah. The state of the art is, um, uh, a lot of these accounting, these, these emissions or these scope three emissions, uh, um, platforms, they're essentially SaaS platforms and they are, um, you know, everybody in your supply chain signs up for it and you upload your documents and your data to this closed network. Um, and the guy at the very top who's demanding the emissions data, um, is able to calculate it. And so what you end up with is a million you know a million pdfs yeah um and that's not like that's not the future so all these different climate accounting solutions that you're seeing that are functioning like that like it's just once there's real dollars behind this environmental data like i don't they're gonna shut shut down because companies are going to be saying look we can't have a thousand like the investors can say we can't have a hundred thousand PDFs. We need to have access to the data. We need to see it real time. If you want to, you know, if you want access to kind of capital, you know, and so there's, I, I, um, I think that there is, there's a shift that needs to happen in the marketplace, but the challenge is that companies currently aren't comfortable sharing emissions data in a very public way. Um, and they're not going to until uh, there's real money attached to it, right? Until their corporate profitability is affected by their emissions data and their ability to kind of get that data out to the right people and allow those people to kind of have, you know, yeah. easy access to it, be able to use it how they need it. Um, so we're kind of, but it's a chicken and the egg, right? Because you need to have a system like this in order to allow these different forces to work. Yeah. Um, so this is a very, you know, uh, I'll, space I'll we're let working you through. continue on since we have 13 minutes left here. Okay. Yeah. So very quickly. Um, yeah. So we, last year we got, we won the call just for some kind of, you know, um, 
you know, pat ourselves on the back. We, you know, we won uh, the uh, Hyperledger Foundation um, award last year. Um, I forget the exact name of it. Uh, we also won the um, IBM Call for Code Green Practices Accelerator. We've got, you know, um, some interesting research going on um, around uh, around kind of this measurement economy space. Um, but what we're really looking for right now is um, we need corporate partners. We need, you know, and so I'm kind of, and, and actually Jeff is helping with this kind of um, working on um, evangelizing, uh, evangelizing this, this idea and, and trying to kind of bring more um, corporate partners to the table. Um, and so I'm in the process of really kind of um, really, it's almost kind of like presenting what we're doing, but also informational interviews. I'm kind of trying to find out where they are and what the challenges that they're looking at. And, and um, if anything that we're doing is lines up with, with, you know, what, what they're doing and, and if they have, you know, you know, innovation, uh, innovation, people that want to kind of play around and explore things like that's kind of the stage that we are at. It's a really interesting stage. And so I wanted, that's part of the reason I wanted to engage with you guys, you know, because we're all part, you know, of this, you know, same network, you know, the tool that we built is your tool. Um, and 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 so I kind of wanted to kind of engage with you guys to see how we might um, start engaging with some supply chain folks and start having some conversations and start exploring um, exploring the space because I, I think you know we're I think we're ahead of I mean it's a good to be ahead of the game a little bit but it's it's also can be challenging right so we you know and and it's not it's not a huge in engaging different companies. It's not like we're asking them to buy anything at the most, if they're interested, we're asking them to kind of devote resources to kind of exploring how they can use it. Right. So it's not a real high barrier to entry. So I kind of wanted to kind of touch base with you guys, just to hear your thoughts on anybody that, you know, or how, you know, if you're interested or if you know of anybody uh, that might be kind of interested in, in kind of discussing this stuff. Uh Shobi uh, has a question here, and he's, he has, sure. to, has to leave now. Shobi, I don't know if you want to mention real fast what you got here. Or did Shobi leave? I'm not sure. Oh, no. So, looks, I'll read it here for you, sure. When we are working on a supply yeah. chain product on blockchain, and it's running in Germany. They want to expand it to U.S., but the real challenge is set up a database for U.S., should be specific to U.S. region only. So it sounds like there's some, uh, um, you know, data, data data protection standard stuff so that's going into this. Oh, right. And in database, a blockchain is a matter of setup node in the U.S., but regulatory is not accepted because they mentioned block data, gene data is encrypted and does not work for layman language or verification. And so he's interested, or Shobi's interested in what are you looking for? looking to do in such a situation. So the real challenge of the set of the data is for US, for US region only in WS. Regulatory is not accepting because they mentioned blockchain data is encrypted and doesn't work for layman's language or verification. Um, I'm not sure that I understand the question. Yeah. It, it did. I, I think I was. It, we'll, we'll, uh, We'll we'll have to get you linked up, or you could we can look for, like this. Yeah, you know, linked in there. Yeah, I uh, so be kind. Let me see if I can reach out to him on LinkedIn. Okay, good. Yeah, when I just Jeff, when I read that, it sounds like somebody doesn't understand blockchain. Yeah, the regulatory body doesn't like understand blockchain data. Blockchain data is encrypted. Okay, well, it's easy to unencrypt it with the keys. I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, sounds like somebody doesn't. They're saying it is encrypted. Yeah. Blockchain data is encrypted. It doesn't work sure. for layman language verification. I don't know what layman, layman language means, but verification, you're going to lock with the keys, obviously. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, yeah, that's what I don't understand. I, I'll have to reach out to, to, Toby. yeah. Toby okay. See if I can get some clarification. Good. Okay, well, why don't we leave, leave that one off the side? Folks around, okay. we'll, we'll 
questions that we have for Sherwood here and uh, Sherwood, you, and it sounds like your call to action here, next steps is kind of similar to what uh, our group is finding corporate partners, finding folks who would be willing to help take this to the next level is what right. you're saying. Yes. Is that we're all, is that what we're, is that what we're all looking for? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we we all want to create we want to create a more successful ecosystem that uses blockchain, right? In yeah. some form. So let me let me stop there and let's see what uh, the rest of the folks have to say. Yeah, Sherwood, I'm wondering, have you looked at or spoken with anyone at Providence.org, Jesse Baker's shop out of London? No, They've been I'm not around even since at least 2019, 18, and their their formation was really around verifying companies' um, climate data, climate claims, and labor claims, or organic, fair trade, etc. And I just took a quick look at their website. It says that they are verifying client carbon data. Okay. I put a link in the chat, but they might be somewhere to, they might be a company that would be useful for you to talk to. Or <coughs> Very interesting. Thank you for that. I'll, I'll do that, Alicia. You're welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. <laughs> we need to get you some. It's cold. It just, it just won't quit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else thoughts? The only thought I have, this is Jeff again, is I'm actually looking at the Providence site, but one of the um, things around scope three emissions, <laughs> which is the emissions of the product you're producing is, is um, how can, like, I call, I'll call it Sherwood solution, but what we're looking at here is how to get the auditors out of it. That's expensive, the auditing. Um, and um, you can get them out of the middle with smart contracts that are um, immutable. Then once that formula is computed, once what the carbon emissions are, then do you need an auditor anymore? Um, I'll go back to the gasoline picture. Is uh, Every gallon of gasoline in the United States and Western Europe has to have measured properties before it's shipped through the pipeline system. Every, every gallon. Now they... They don't measure, they, they do a big batch of 70,000, 80,000 barrels of fuel, but um, it's stored in silo databases. And I'll say Exxon BP had one, and so did um, Shell, but um, the stuff is stored and, and then it's it's shipped to the EPA. Well, in the law, auditors have to come in once a year and the EPA comes in every five years and they audit all your data. They look through your database and so forth. Now, I'll admit we change things. Um, <laughs> And the auditors came in, they can only take a sample out of the data. Now, that's expensive. But if there's, they don't have a carbon profile on gasoline or jet fuel or diesel, you could easily do it because they do profiles on the other. So all the pollutants that go in the air. If you have something that would uh, store it in the blockchain today, it's immutable. So now um, with a smart contract, you throw the auditors out. The auditors are expensive. These people are there at your site for a month every year. They don't charge fifteen dollars an hour either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and can this solution that sure would show and get rid of the auditors also? I'm not sure. I mean, it, for for some components, I think yes. For some, no. I mean, we can like. I don't know about the auditors. We get verification uh, in certain ways. Like if you can verify something just by looking at the data. Um, or looking at reporting right. um, that's been put out, like because the the value of this is essentially you're you're providing the all the information involved with measurement reporting, and so if you have, you know, if you can do that off of the screen, um, you know, one thing you can do is essentially what we discussed is creating a DAO where you have uh, uh, auditors competing to audit, right? So there's you know you can bring down the market cost there. There might also be some AI applications for, for that. Um, mm. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that um, for some components, it, it seems like that could be a possibility. Good. Okay. Thanks, Sherwood, for uh, sharing your thoughts here on the uh, 
the new measurement economy here. We're at the, the top of the hour. We'll post this uh, session on uh, YouTube here with the help of okay. uh, us at Hyperledger. So that'll, that'll be out there. Uh, Sherwood, I think if you want to put in the chat your um, email or just mention it via via voice. Absolutely. Recording Absolutely. There. Let me, I'll go ahead and share it. Um, and Sherwood, and can you share the deck with us as well? Uh, absolutely. Let me actually just, I can actually share both into the chat really quickly. Okay, good. Um, one moment. So here is the, um, deck and I'm, um, in the process of, uh, updating it, but good. y'all can watch that progress. Okay. Where's the chat? I'm just sorry. I know you guys, I need to do this really quickly. Chat. There it is. Okay, here. Here's uh, the deck, and here is, oh, whoops, to everyone. To it's asking me a direct message, everyone there. Okay. Okay. And then, is it sure, deck? If you got if, it. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And sure, what if you could get back to Shobi? If you can't figure out who Shobi is, let us know, and then we'll help you figure that out. Absolutely. I'll do that. Okay, well, thanks. thanks for having me, everybody. Great speaking with you. Absolutely. It's great stuff. It's great. You got code here. That's <laughs> wonderful. You know, that, that always is half the battle. Like you said, you know, you got a lot of the chicken and egg here and you're, you're working on the chicken portion of it. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye, yeah. It's bye, Sherwood. Thanks, Talk everybody. Soon, we'll talk thanks. to you in a couple of weeks. Uh, enjoy your your life in supply chain and trade finance and climate action or in the new measurement economy. Bye. At the beginning, at the time at the beginning of the meeting, you were talking about, you were going to discuss something about upcoming work or picking a project or something. I think we'll save that for maybe the next time. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the idea of it, because I'd like to close it here on, on time for everybody because I know everyone has to move on, but, and Jeff, I'm happy to give you a holler offline here. I just meet you at Starbucks. <laughs> that, that sounds good. Okay. Well, maybe we can. Well, I don't know. I'll give you a holler. We'll figure that out. <laughs> okay. You this time closer to you. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks, Sherwood. Thanks, Sherwood. Bye. Bye, Thank you. Bye everyone.